I'm not going to talk to you the way I just talked to them. We got some growing up to do. You know, we've lost the last three games in the first five minutes. We haven't come out, played with the passion, the intensity that we need to. You know, then we battle, battle, battle. And obviously, we get it back to 10, 10 points at one point, and then we fold at the end, and they get it back to a 20-point victory. Uh, obviously, our defense in the first half was atrocious. We guarded them with 41% in the second half, the way we, were, you know, we had planned on defending them. Um, you know, we just got to get better, and we're at home. It was great at one point we got it to 10. I heard the crowd, you know, it was nice to be in here and hear the crowd uh, supporting us and making some noise and us getting a home court advantage. But I, I just talked to them about whatever they do when they're away from us uh, with their pregame preparation, it's got to change because a lot of them are not coming out. And, and once again, you guys know, I always talk about veterans, uh, you know, your seniors and, and our juniors, and they've got to be on these guys to prepare and get themselves ready to go out and win games. Uh, You know, I, I just thought we were, you know, we were outclassed, and uh, uh, somebody, our guy, Sean Capriva, had a great night. You know, he's a kid who visited here, a wonderful kid. But, uh, you know, he was great. He was great. We kind of just manhandled our big guys tonight, and that's unacceptable. Yeah, that spurt, you get it down to 10. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between those few moments where you're able to do that and then, you know, yeah, I just think we're competing. We're, we're, we're playing at a high level at, in, in the sense of intensity. We're attacking the rim. Guys are playing within themselves and they're making the plays they're capable of making. And, uh, you know, and, I, and I, we got into some blitzes against them and, and, and turned them over. I mean, we got 13 turnovers, uh, you know, against them. And, and off the turnovers, we scored a little bit. We got out in the open floor and there were some shot opportunities that way. I really think it's just intensity. And toughness, you know. Uh, against the zone, it seemed like the the bigs for GW were just getting easy looks off the the glass. Rooms didn't didn't play as many minutes in the first half. I know you're trying to go small and, and get some buckets, but it seemed like the bigs of GW were just too much tonight. They were, without a doubt. We were trying to double down on them. Like I said, Capriva killed us, and you know Larson. We doubled fairly often. He still got 11 points. We could have lived with that, but I think Capriva's 19 really hurt us. And and even Garino on, on a couple of occasions. You know, he got some buckets late, but uh, yeah, I mean, our bigs got to, you know, they just got to compete. They can't be, uh, you know, they can't be driven up the lane. They were driven up the lane a few times, baseline bounce passes for layups, you know, before our, our double could even get there. So obviously something we need to work on. Is there any explanation for the slow start and when something like that happens? Is it what you're talking about, just like, their mindset coming into the game or how they're preparing for the game? Well, I don't know the answer, uh, Chuck. I mean, if I did, I would change it immediately. I mean, I'm going to change the way we go about our pregame. Uh, and I'm going to you know, get their attention uh, and make sure they understand it's game day and, and things are going to be a little bit different. You know, you can't be afraid to change, uh, you know. Uh, so we're going to change the way we go about our pregame day. And uh, in turn, maybe it'll have an effect on them and, and they're going to need to do the same. But. Um, you know, I think it, it, it's not so much the first couple buckets, and it, it's, you know, it's how you respond when you get punched in the nose. You know what I mean? Do you get mad and, and, and go make a play and go to the foul line and make a couple baskets? And, and I got to probably start burning time out as soon as we're down six points instead of waiting until it's ten. You know, when I'm trying to, I'm trying to allow them to learn a little bit on the go, and, uh, and uh, it's not working. So I got to change the way I'm approaching this as well. One positive uh, on the bench was Severe had 12 points tonight, attacking the rim instead of in the beginning hoisting a lot of threes. Um, this sort of is his highest outing since coming back. He still seemed a little rusty with the four assist, but do you like what you saw from number 10 today? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, you know, John played well in spurts. Uh, he, he's got to continue to work on guarding, and uh, he can't turn the ball over. You know, his assist to turnover ratio is still very poor. So. He's got to work on those things. But yeah, it was nice to see. And look, I went with that lineup because we just needed baskets. So our best offensive lineup is Christian and Eric at the four, and then, you know, John Mandela and I believe Brian at that time, and then for a little bit of time, Nemanja. Um, but, you know, we just needed some buckets. So uh, that's the group we went with. We played small. That hurt us in the post, too. Can you talk about the decision to start Mandel and kind of where you are right now? 
at that position. Yeah, well, Mandel, I, you know, I'm going to watch the tape, obviously, tonight and again tomorrow, and then we're going to watch it in here as a group tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I don't think Mandel did a horrible job. He had five assists, two turnovers. He had 15 points. He had eight rebounds. So, I mean, he filled up a box score for a guy playing with the ball in his hands. You know, a couple bad decisions, one on the break right in front of our bench when we had a chance to, to make a little bit of a run. But uh, overall, I, I don't think it was it, it was horrible. Uh, and you know, Antoine will come off the bench and back him up for now, and then we'll see how things progress. Hopefully, we can get back and get everybody back in their normal positions in time. With the intense uh, season, you guys have seen they keep each game close, and then near the end or at the end, it either explodes. What's the the thing for the next few games to finally get over that hump and, and get that one win um, to make the guys feel happier? Well, I think well. How about the coach feeling That's happy? Right. Yeah, you're right. It is about them. And uh, the schedule's been brutal. I mean, but, you know, what, what are you going to do? This is who we play. I mean, early on in the year, we got three home games against three of the four best teams in the league. Um, so, you know, if you look at the schedule, it softens a little bit if you start looking at records and who we have coming in. But I said to them, that doesn't mean anything, you know. I just said to them, guys, if you don't change your ways and start competing for 40 minutes, you know, it's not going to just happen. It's not going to, and I apologize to Kiba, uh, but T, because, you know what, he plays really hard. He's limited in what he can do, but he plays really hard, and I should have played him more, because at least he would have battled with some of those big guys and thrown his body around. So, uh, you know, that wasn't the answer to victory, but I think I've got to reward him, because I think there's guys that are taking possessions off and getting a little too comfortable in their spots, and uh, it doesn't matter what year you are. You know, you're going to compete for minutes here. It's the only way I know how to do it. You talked in the past about having more than one point guard. So right now, just with that whole situation, start the season, Amani is a starter, then Antoine, now uh, tonight, Mandel. Can you just kind of evaluate the three of them? I know I asked this similar question before. Yeah, well, right just now. Just what you've got from all three this year. Yeah, well, Mandel's, you know, right now, Mandel's our starting point guard. I think Antoine's performance over the two games prior to this was not very, was not very good. I think he was overwhelmed by game plan and all the things that go into going into a game and then running a team on this level. So, uh, you know, I think the best thing for his development and for ours as a team was to move Mandela into that spot. Nemanja has been shooting the ball well. He gets more shots when we play him off the ball. Uh, obviously, we're struggling with double teams and, and of the, things of that nature early on. Everyone sees film. The eye in the sky doesn't lie. We say all the time. So when people see film, they would jump at him. So by moving him off the ball, we're getting him a couple more looks. And, uh, you know, we'll give him and allow him some time to develop. So, uh, but right now, you know, it looks like Mandel's the man. And, uh, you know, we'll get in here tomorrow, take care of some business. And then uh, we're taking Saturday off. And we'll be back Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, getting ready for a roadie, I believe, on Wednesday, right? I mean, you said um, there's a different mindset when this team goes on the road than at home. What do you tell them, and I guess in an easy way, what do you try to tell them to spark them up for a home game, um, you know, when you got GW coming to town? Yeah. Well, look, I told them at walkthrough, if they didn't come out foaming from the mouth and ready to play like a pack of dogs, they weren't going to win this game. Because they learned their lesson at LaSalle. Okay, GW went into LaSalle and got beat because LaSalle jumped their bones. And they looked like a team that learned their lesson. And they came out, you know, veteran leadership, and they went out and they took care of business, and they didn't let it happen again. We obviously didn't come out and play with that type of uh, sense of urgency. And, uh, and that's, that's where we're going to be at. Uh, you know, whether it's home or on the road, in this league, the seventh-ranked league in America, you cannot go out and just go through the motions. And I don't care if you got pros on the floor, and there's teams in this league that do, obviously. And uh, even with that being the case, if you don't bring your game and you're not mentally and physically to prepare to, to, to go after it on the highest level, then youth is not uh, an excuse anymore. I have to get them old, and I have to get them wise, and they have to understand, uh, you know, and it's hard. Look, they're losing and they feel bad about it and they have self-confidence and I got to keep them pumped up about that at the same time. And that's the great dynamic, uh, you know, and that's the great balance. Pushing them, making them better, demanding things of them at this age, but at the same time, letting them understand that they have the... the I said to them, there's guys in our locker room with more uh, talent in their pinky than some of the guys who played very well for the opposing team tonight. And that's a damn shame. And, and, and that's something we have to push and we have to demand from them. And uh, it's all part of the dynamic. 
here. It's all part of me changing the culture. And uh, obviously the struggle of doing that continues. I'm not, you know, I'm not playing make believe with you guys. I never do. So is there a lack of leadership or something amongst your group? Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I talk to the veterans all the time about it, you know. Uh, I talked to them about getting into them. You know, Brian Smith is a senior. This is his legacy. I want my son to grow up and be as nice a kid as Brian Smith. But uh, I also want him and other veterans to take ownership of the locker room. Let guys understand what it takes to be great. It's hard when you haven't won. All right, they all won in high school. None of them know how to win in college because we haven't won here yet. So it's a challenge to get those veterans to, to understand and to to be able to sell to the young guys, to the rookies, hey, here's what we need to do. Because I'm sure in the back of their mind, they're not quite sure either. Because on this level, they haven't been able to do it yet. So it's quite frustrating, obviously. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much.